Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're in the right place at the right time. It is Tuesday at five o'clock. And uh, I tell you, my guests are in the green room. They're waiting to get on the air. We've got Slick Double in the house. Uh, I'm excited to have him on the road. I mean, he's on the road, but he's still excited to come on the show. So we're going to get to our announcements, get them out the way so we can get him on the air with us. Uh, the first thing I want to do is give a shout out to all of the healthcare heroes that are out there in the world, keeping our loved ones alive. I always like to shout them out because they have a thankless job. Their job is helping to make our loved ones well enough to send back to us. And I tell you, I appreciate each and every one of them that are on their job because I like to tell y'all this, even though there may be some folks out there that think that this thing is over with, it is not over with. We got germs out there killing people uh, each and every day. People are still dying, you know, so please be careful, wear a mask, keep your distance, wash your hands, be safe. That's what we have to do at a time like this. Be safe, okay? That's what's important right now is to be safe safe. Also like to give a shout out to all of our spiritual leaders and pastors that are out there uh, keeping us encouraged, uh, keeping us motivated, uh, keeping us uplifted during these strange times because it is definitely strange times. A special shout out to my mentor and good friend, Dr. Uh, Hunt who has been with me for over 30 years, have been keeping me uplifted and encouraged. And I pray for him every day as he prays for me every day. If you've got a leader, pray for them because we need to keep our leadership uplifted. And the more we pray for them, that makes it easier for them to be able to pray for us. So definitely uh, keep your leadership uplifted in prayer. All right. So now I want to run over here and invite you all to go over to my um, ask-dr-rdron.com. Ooh, got a tie tongue there. Uh, and when you get over there, I want you to check out all of my advertisers. We have quite a few advertisers that help it make it possible for us to do what we do here. And I tell you, um, you know, without them, I would not be able to do what I do. Uh, uh, we have RRJ Webb, we have Prince Hunter Financial Group, and Port Again Sam, just to name a few. Uh, also want to point out Prince Hunter Group. Prince Hunter Group uh, will teach you how to do um, trading of the Forex market and the stock market. And he's offering four free lessons. So what you need to do is just go there, click on the banner, it'll take you to his website and you'll be able to call him up and say, I am calling for my four free lessons, okay? Reach out to him if you have a desire to wanna learn how to make money with the stock market or the Forex market, he can teach you, give you some basics so that you can understand. Also scroll up to the top. Once you get to my website, you'll see all of my social media. Once you go to my social media, uh, pay close attention to my YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe, like, and share. We need you to subscribe, like, and share. Okay? And that will allow us to be able to notify you when we post new videos on our page. Okay, so um, our guest today is all the way down in New Orleans, Louisiana. And I tell you, uh, that's my, my other home, uh, my second home. I, I, I've Spent a great deal of time in New Orleans. I love New Orleans. New Orleans is a beautiful place. Uh, I love the food. I love the people. 
I went there for a visit and wound up staying uh, nine years. So I have to admit that I did not know anything about the hip hop movement when I was down there. But our guest today is a member of the Four Horsemen. Uh, and he's also worked with the Four Horsemen, producing and doing various uh, projects on his own. Mr. Slick Double, welcome to the show, my brother. And happy to be here to have me. Thank you. Yeah, uh, you I see. I, I got to let everybody know he's traveling. He's on the move. So he's going to fade in and out. We can barely see him at the moment, but I'm sure he's going to come into vision pretty soon. Uh, there he is. He's in and out. There he is. So, um, What's good? Yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear us? I hear you. Okay. So, you know, I want to ask, uh, you know, a few questions about, uh, first of all, how do you characterize yourself as a musician? Because, you know, New Orleans is a music town, first of all. There's music from the That's time that you, uh, little bitty, you know, young fellas all the way up until you, you know, you're older. It's always music everywhere. I mean, everywhere. You know, they got little uh, marching bands. They got everything. So, right. you know, it, how it, do you... It's, man, it's on, it's on the corners from the little brothers beating on buckets to the little homies tap dancing with the body caps. It's everywhere. Everywhere, you know, you know, French Quarter, all over the place. So, how do Everywhere. you characterize yourself in the music industry, man? That sun yeah. is killing us, man. Uh, is there anywhere you could pull over that the sun ain't beaming you, blocking you out? Because it's right over your right shoulder, man. And I don't want I want people to be able to see you. That's a better. That's better. There we go. Yeah. We get comfortable in a minute, baby. Okay. All right. So, um, what what do you characterize yourself as in the music industry? I characterize myself as as basically an artist. You know what I mean? Um, I pretty much dibble and dabble in it all, from from the horn blowing to the percussion drums, piano, I pretty much do it all. Rap, sing, write, I mean, act, just all around artists, um, pretty much in the gumbo flavor of a brother like me from New Orleans, you know? You say gumbo flavor. That's a popular term down there, you know? Uh, you know, for those that don't know, when they talk about gumbo, they put everything in the pot and it comes out all right. If they come out. Delicious. <laughs> see, see that, 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 that's how we like to make the music over here delicious. You okay. know what I mean? Thing got to be delicious. If it ain't delicious, we don't want nothing. I know you that's know? right. You know, uh, I, I got to admit, when I first got to New Orleans, that was one of the things that made me stay. You know, once food. I got there, man, brother, food, food. everywhere. You know, got to eat. Gotta eat. Yeah. The first three years that I was in New Orleans, man, I didn't even buy groceries. I know you, you packed know. on a few. Packed yeah, on a few. man. Every day at happy hour, uh, oh. you can buy a beer and they would give you uh, uh, either uh, some red beans and rice. Uh, That's right. They give you a, a sack of crawfish. They give you a sack man, of crab. Hey, you, you buy some drinks, they're going to feed you. You know man, I mean, every day for three years, man, I, I just refused to buy. You just had to go to a different location. That's it, you know? And trust me, I was getting it in, you know? I was like, man, I'm never leaving this place. Got no choice but to get it in, bro. It's just that type yeah. of place. It, yes. it's, it's magic. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a love-hate relationship we got down here with New Orleans, you know what I mean? There's no other place in the world like it. You know, I, I, I've been a lot of places, had a lot of fun in a lot of places. This just a ball game of itself right here, second to none, you know. But I'm more than sure everybody feel like that about their hometown, maybe because you ain't been here yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, it's just that spot. Yeah. 
It's the spot. Now, now, also, New Orleans is a place that has 24-hour music. You know, there are some people that don't even come out till 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning Boy, to, you right. know, to, start, to start their evening rounds. You know, I mean, and they got a fresh band, a fresh band kicking up, you know, because they, they be working in the French Quarter. They be working all over the place. Now, when I was down there, now you can answer this question. Now, not too many artists like to work the French Quarter. Man, it all depends on uh, what kind of music you you displaying um, that's going to take in the French Quarter. But nine times, it's the French Quarter, man. Everybody drunk. They just want to hear some music. You know okay. what I'm saying? It depends on what kind of setting you have. If you have like a dinner setting, a uh, lunch setting, something like that, you know what I mean? You know, obliged for that kind of music to go down. You know what I mean? But there's a different kind of music, something for everybody all day, every day, 24 hours a day. You're right. As long as far as the corner stores and the grocery stores also, you can go get your six pack, of, a pint of Hennessy, a pack of cigarettes and a plate two in the morning. You know what yep. I mean? It's the party city. Yep. You know, it's Sin City. Yep. You say Sin City, huh? Yeah, hey, uh, your brother uh, Maceo just hollered out your name. He's on the line. Uh, we also up? got, huh? Mace, what's good, baby? How you doing? Yeah, we also got um, Triple P Management. She's on the line, putting all your information up for everybody to see. She's one the of P, the reasons. Baby. You know, we uh, uh, we came to know each other through Triple P. Uh, I, so definitely got to shout her out. Uh, we got PB a few made. other people. Yeah. Yeah. Who we got? Yeah, we got uh, Ferris Davis on the line. Um, That's what's up. Yeah. Um, and we got uh, Venicia Osbury Griffin. Uh, we got my brother Jed. That's on the That's line. Shout up. out to all those people that are on the line checking us out. Um, yeah, Maceo said, I'm cooling, bro. You know, so that's <laughs> that's that's the thing that y'all do. It's Mace, cool. Maceo, Maceo is the coolest. You know what yes. I'm saying? That's, the that's it. That's it. That's coolest all. Right there. Yeah, for sure. For sure. You My know, life. so. Shout out. Uh, yeah. So you say you call yourself an artist, but then the music that you make, uh, would you consider it a rap thing or a hip hop thing? Or what would you consider you know, the I, genre? I could I I don't I don't put my music in one genre. You know what I'm saying? It's it's an art form. You know, I mean, it's just, you know, my music is kind of all over the place here and there. It's, it's not it's not never confined to one box. You know what I mean? It's 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 pop. It's rock. It's heavy. You know, it, 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 it's R and B. It's classical because we make classics. That's what music is made to be last forever you know what i mean and that's what we do over here so i consider this over here just music just doing some good music you know no no hip-hop no pop no r&b no jazz it's it's a gumbo it's music all in one you know what i mean and that and that's what i'm putting out some fun some good music some good feeling some good food for your soul and that's what's coming from slick double feeding your soul Check me out. I know that's right. Yeah, I know that's right. So now, um, would you say that your music uh, has a message to it? And if you do, Man. what music? What message would you say that your music amplifies the most? I mean, if anything, I speak on doing what you have to do to make it happen for you and yours by any means necessary in a legitimate way you know what i mean you know and that's in all of my music i understand how you got to do things but there's a better way to do that and get what you need and get what you want Pete. man your signal is breaking up pretty bad uh, uh can you hear me i don't know if you reality. can hear me or not yeah you must have went through a bad area because you broke up a little bit right there yeah uh, can you hear me? Hello. I can hear you good. Okay, yeah, because you 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 faded yeah, out. Yeah, I can hear you well. Bit. Okay, yeah, you faded out a little bit. Yeah, um, the signal in the area where you at must have, you know, it's, it's a little shaky. 
Yeah. Um, so you all bear with us. We're having a little technical difficulties. You know, we are. Uh, he's on his way to his destination where we can uh, get a better signal. So I'm hoping that uh, once he gets there, that the signal will clear up a little bit and we'll be able to hear because we don't want to miss a word that he has to say. Um, you know, I've been so excited and so looking forward to, you know, hearing my brother from New Orleans talk and he's got, he's definitely got a message, you know, and I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, hearing everything. I don't want to miss none of it, but, um, uh, you know, he and I have talked on last month and he was working and, and, uh, getting his hustle on and it appears that, you know, he's on his way to a project right now, trying to make some things happen. So uh, just give us a minute and uh, he'll be in a location where we'll be able to not have a choppy signal. I'm hoping he's almost there. You know, he said in a minute, so we ought to be getting close, you know, to where, where his signal is. Can you hear me? Really yeah, yeah, you, you're just breaking up real bad. You know, uh, you, you, you're popping in and out. Yeah. So shout out to some of your other brothers that are that are on the line with us. Uh, we got uh, uh, Landry's on the line. Shout out to our brother. He said, "Woo." Um, we got uh, Alicia Rimson on the line. Shout out to her. Um, you know, we appreciate her. She's all the way up in Wisconsin. Uh, Wisconsin. Yeah. How we coming through, baby? Okay, you look a little bit more stable, like you're stabilizing. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's good. Now, back to what I was asking the question uh, about your message in your music. You know, I'm trying to uh, understand, you know, you say you talk about positive things and, and, and people doing what they got to do. Uh, so let's pick up right there. I mean, you know, we're trying to spread the love, man. It's a positivity. It's a reality movement in every song I make. It's got some kind of reality, whether it's gritty or whether it's not. I'm going to give it to them raw and uncut, and that's just how it got to be. That's the only way we can be out here. We need to be real with one another and tell the truth. You know what I mean? You got to mm -hmm. tell the truth. I'm speaking some truth. I'm speaking the gospel over here. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and when you speak the gospel, it doesn't necessarily have to be quoting Bible scriptures, which I have nothing against that. It's all truths. The gospel is the truth. So, you know, the truth is the only thing that needs to be spread in music. Music is very powerful. You know what I mean? Music is very powerful. Like per se, the Bible is real powerful. Music can make you laugh. Music can make you cry. Music can make you fall in love. Music can make you angry. Music can make you fight. So um, that's a very powerful tool that us as artists, musicians, rappers, singers, yodelers, whatever you may do, you have a real big power right there. And you need to conduct it and use it in the right, correct form and fashion. You know what I mean? So I try to use my power in such a manner. All right. That's that's positive. Uh, so so do you use a lot of uh, profanity in your in your music? I mean, you know, um, I try not to. Sometimes you can't get away from using the damn or shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> got to get to the point. You got to scream at them something. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. I hear you say sometimes you just they just go right there. <laughs> hey, yeah, man. You know, you could beat around the bush sometime, but they're like, nah, you know. You know, it's like, you know, it's like when you're talking to your kids, you know, sometimes you gotta say, damn it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Get your point across, make your presence known. Yeah, I got you. Now I gotta ask this question. Uh I usually ask all of the brothers that that come on that do uh, hip hop music or rap music, I asked them, you know, uh, do they encourage, you know, young people to walk around with their, you know, pants down, things like that, you know, uh, doing things that can be considered dangerous? 
I mean, you know, you try not to encourage, like I said, that's power. You try not to encourage anything that's not going to get them where they need to be in life. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't I don't necessarily promote the pants sagging or the, or the skin tight jeans for my brothers and this and that, but you know it is what it is. Um, it's a new day and age, it's a new fashion call, and you gotta you gotta you gotta move up and, and and blend in with the times to do so. But um, I don't promote that. I don't I don't believe a kid should be walking around uh, showing his underwear and uh, as the old jailhouse saying goes, inviting somebody to your booty. You right. know what I mean? So you know I don't I don't I don't promote that. Or, um, I don't I don't. I mean you know it's a it's a sagging is a is a it could be okay and it could not be okay. It's all according to how you're wearing your clothes and what's your swag, but you still don't have to sag down to your knees. We're going to put it like yeah. that. I'm not yeah. announcing it, and I'm not saying I'm for it or against it, but it's all on how you do it. It ain't yeah. what you do, it's how you do it. And that's the truth. Yeah. Well, you know, um, I, I do know that it's, ver- it's fairly dangerous in this day and age. You know, when we were young people, we didn't have a tradition like that. And um, if we were playing on the street corner and somebody's dog got loose and the first thing they started, that dog started doing is running towards that pack of kids that's on the corner. Well, if you got your pants down so low that you can't run, guess what going to happen between you and the dog? Okay. You going to get ate up. He going to get everybody who, who can't get nowhere. You know, that's right. And, and and as a kid, we always understood that I don't have to outrun the dog. All I got to do is outrun you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and then you and the dog can talk that out. But I'm gone. <laughs> you know. Right. So, you know, I I don't encourage young people to do that because you know it it could be very dangerous on occasions. You know, you're out there. You know, doing what you're doing, hanging out, whatever, whatever. And then you can't run. You can't get nowhere. Sometimes it's required to run. And That's you know, right. You know, and you got to know when to run and who to run from. You know, just yeah, like that dog. Please, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that you cannot. <laughs> you know, you cannot. That is not a good thing. Just like uh, you have children. How many children you got? Yes, I'm being so personal do. now. <laughs> Got six. Uh-huh. You got six kids. Any That's boys? Right. Five boys, one girl. Okay. So when you tell your young men, you know, to 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 be prepared at all times, you know, you can't be prepared if you're sagging. Can't be prepared if you're sagging. You know what I mean? You gotta put your belt on. You gotta be prepared. That's for anything. <laughs> you know. That's not bad. Look. <laughs> And even in this day and age, if you go for a job, no matter what the job man, you, is, you got to my, pull your pants up. I mean, you want a you want a job, you want to go to school. You can't walk in anybody's classroom like that. You know, there's certain uh, restaurants won't even serve you to sit down and have a meal. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, it, it's deeper than 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 oneself. I mean, you have to have some pride in yourself. Right. You know what I mean? Have some pride upon yourself. When you leave out the door, look accordingly. Never right. know who, when, or what you're going to run into. You yeah. know, you know. Back you, back in yeah, back back in the day when I was running the streets in my, you know, you uh, run. You, I knew you was running them streets all the time. <laughs> you know, uh, but but in my era in the seventies, the late seventies and the uh, early eighties, man, when we went out, we had on three piece suits. You okay. know, and you know, and we had froze all the way out to here. Okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah, okay. all them times is gone now. But Man, you three <laughs> articles of clothing right now. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> man, we were sharp. Man, we were sharp, brother. We okay. we were Yeah. Man, yep. Look, we, we we had on real shoes, not tennis shoes. Right. You know, brother, we would hit the we would hit the dough. And, uh, man, everybody be trying to figure out, well, who is that? You know, so, you know, and I'm sure it's still that way now, but we had a different uniform when we was out running the streets. Not, not, not the key to that. And what I'm trying to say is when you got on a three 
three-piece suit and you hit in the streets, you ain't out there for no humbugging. That's now, right. You know, your mentality is altogether different. You know, you out there trying to, you know, accomplish some other things. You ain't out That's there trying to, you know, just, you know, like, hey, man, I'm going to go out here in a three-piece suit and get into a bar, a bar brawl, you know, now. Nah. Right. Now, right. You know, right. just your uniform is different. Uh, Fred, Fred State just showed up. He says Fred, respect. I, Shout out good. to Fred. What's good, baby? Yeah. So, you know, your brothers are showing up to represent. I like that, man. But you that, know. That's how we do, bro. That's the only way to do. Yeah, that's man. You know, all, all them brothers been on the show before. So, you know, I've had the honor and privilege to be able to talk about the music and what, the, and what you all do. And, that's right. and, you know, and I didn't give a chance to make this speech uh, early on. Um, I, I'm nowhere near a seasoned um, veteran, you know, when it comes to understanding, you know, the hip hop music, you know, um, but because of uh, all of your brothers, the Four Horsemen and other brothers, you know, um, you know, uh, James Frazier, a.k.a. White Boy James, all of those brothers, man, have been educating me to help bridge the gap of understanding, you know. Uh, what's going on between your music to my generation. Like I said, we used to wear three-piece suits and we, you know, we had our little dance music, but but we favored belly rubbing music, okay? But, you know, what we right. used to call it, the, you know, at, at the party where you get close to a girl and, you know, holding her tight and squeezing her tight. And then we got stepping music, which is another form of dancing music. So I, I've been a learning curve and I'm still in that learning curve. So when I ask questions, sometimes I'm trying to increase my knowledge so that I can understand even the more, you know, about this genre of music because our young people love this music, you know. They love, they you love. know, and, and, and just like I saw this um, uh, past weekend on Super Bowl Sunday uh, in LA, they did a tribute to hip hop music, man. That was, was beautiful, man. Did you get a chance to check that out? Oh uh, yeah, most definitely. That was a, a iconic moment right there in hip hop history. You know what I mean? We had, and you had different generations on that stage of hip hop performing. So mm -hmm. you got a little bit of then and now going on right there. And as you can see, it still all boils down to the same thing that we've been rooting for back then. We're still rooting for it now. You know what yeah. I mean? Four horsemen. There you go. Say four horsemen. You know, now, now since you brought it up, let's talk about the four horsemen. What, what, what about the four horsemen? What's your role in the four horsemen? <clears throat> My role in the four horsemen, um, I'm death. Uh, one quarter of the almighty four horsemen. Uh, basically, to sum it all up, I'm wrecking havoc. Um, I'm wrecking havoc with a lot of troops, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and we actually bring in the realism and, and, and fundamentals of hip hop, you know what I mean? We're bringing it back to the knowledge, we're bringing it back to the fun, you know what I mean? We're bringing it back to the ethnicity, what it was made to be. You know what I'm saying? It's pretty much all blown out of proportion now. It's a uh, it's a, a a statistic thing where you got to be this way, look that way, rap this way. Hip hop is none of that. Hip hop is you. You know what I mean? Hip hop is what you want it to be. You know what I'm saying? It's like the old saying go uh, you know when the, when when you get up in church and singing um, you know you're not too good and and and, and they start laughing at you. But grandma slap you and uh, she let you know, you know, everybody could sing, baby, maybe not as the next person, but everybody could sing. See, it's not like that anymore. You know what I'm saying? So we kind of bring it back to that. Um, real rap, real music, real knowledge, statistics in the beginning of the end, keeping you up on that because we here, we've been there, but we here even more. You know what I'm saying? So we're here to explain that in lamest terms to our brothers who can't get with other things. We here for awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and you all have a project that's um, uh, out now. You know yeah, that you all are working I, on. EP the uh, the EP is out right now. That's uh, the Four Horsemen, and it, it's it's basically 
everywhere and anywhere music could get. Downloaded streams are sold. We there. Mm -hmm. We there. And maybe that's some other people don't even know about we there. <laughs> yeah, I know that's right. Yeah, shout out to Miss uh, um, Lynetta Thigpen, a.k.a. Queen, all the way over in Iowa. She tuned in to listen to what's going on. What's good? I hear salute. Yeah, salute. she... Exit she, she, only Lord Nexus Box Million. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah. yeah, she is um uh, uh a hustler herself. She she grew up in Chicago and she wound up over there. But I tell you, man, you know, you talk about people doing it by any means necessary. She's definitely one of those people. She she be out there, man, hustling uh, uh, sandwiches, fish dinners. Boy, she be getting it in. <laughs> by any means, see that 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 goes back to what we was talking about. By any means, you gotta eat. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a billion and one right ways to do it. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, you can only try the sour way so many times. To either you're gonna get your mind right, or you're not gonna be able to get your mind right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I mean, you sell it, you sell food out your house. Uber Eats come to your house, pick it up, and bring it to people. You ain't even got to see nobody. That's you know right. what I mean? That's right. I mean, it's too many ways. It's too many ways to do it. Let's get it done, people. Too yeah. many ways. So now, now I know the Four Horsemen is not just the only project that you work with. How long have you been in the industry making music? Oh man, um, shit. I've been making music since I was 12, bro. Um, recording with two radios, instrumental, and a blank tape. You know what I mean? But I'm going to say uh, professionally, maybe about uh, 17 uh, professionally. I uh, signed my first uh, deal with Black Vision Records. Shout out Wild Wayne. What it do, baby? Q93 Boys. You know, uh, so I've been doing this uh, shit for a long time, man. Pretty long time. Okay. Uh, and and have you seen an evolution in the music since you started to where it's at now, or do you think what you started with is still relevant today? I mean, basically, after the '90s left, the heart of the music left. You know what I'm saying? It kind of went uh, early 2000s, uh, middle 2000s. Uh, you know, I feel the music started going sour. Um, but uh, it's back. Uh, yeah, the, the the essence of hip hop is back in full effect. You know, you got all your forefathers in. Uh, Older, older icons and OGs back in the studios coming to teach these younger brothers how to do this. You know what I mean? Because we have a lot of talent. These young guys are very talented. They're just not being shown anything. You know, mm -hmm. they're not being shown anything to a label their statistic and their commodity. You know what I mean? There's insurance policies on these young guys. They wait to kill each other up so they can cash in. They're going to cash in either way. It's a smarter way. You don't have to be a slave to the protocol either. You know, so we, we, we're trying to show these young guys that, and we salute them. I work with a lot of young artists. You know what I mean? I work with a, with a good bunch of them um, that really want to do this, uh, but just don't know how to do this or they're in it for the wrong business. Main thing, if you don't love it, don't make no sense. You know what I mean? You have to love what you do with anything. If you don't love it, it don't mm -hmm. make sense. You got to learn how to love this craft because this is a craft. You know, it's right. not nothing played with. This is an art form uh, that can make you comfortable. <laughs> you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And, and we take it real seriously for the comfort that we could do for other people. You know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. a lot you can do with your power. Yeah. With your yeah. So now the the music industry being the way that it is in New Orleans, like they 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 have their own style of music. Yeah. Uh is hip hop um, you know, accepted down in New Orleans on a major level or is it still a struggle? Man, um be honest with you, it, it it's still a struggle. You know, I mean, we're in a predominantly uh bounce city state you know what i'm saying new orleans has its own sound uh it has its own picks and chooses of what it wants to run with you know so um yeah it's a uh, it's still stuck down here man so that that just makes you have to branch out and uh go to other states other countries other situations to get appreciated for what you do and i'm more than sure that's from everybody's 
wherever they from. I mean, they got to feel that when they first coming out. Now, unless your, name, your uncle's name Puff. You know what I mean? <laughs> so if your uncle named Puff, you can get over, huh? <laughs> Man, you good. You good. Yeah, I hear you. So uh, do you all have venues down in New, or in New Orleans that you all are able to perform at, or do you have to venture out? No, man, everything open down here. I mean, everything is open. Um, concert series uh, going on right now. Uh, Rick Ross just left last weekend. You know, it's it, 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 okay. venues opening up and running. Everything's up and running um, at your own risk. You know what I'm saying? You say at your <laughs> own risk. I know that's right. Yeah. So I take it the numbers are down because I know you and I were talking over the weekend and they got parade season going on right now. Yeah. So so is the, the turnout. Not, the numbers not necessarily down, man. I mean, it's just is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, me personally, I don't think they'd ever shut it down like they did a couple of years ago. You know what I'm saying? It just we just living with something that's not gonna leave, and you gotta make some good judgment. Some, some good calls on what you do and how you move. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. And that's why I say on you at your own risk. You know, we, we, we fighting something even more deadly than than that gunshot from around the corner now. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Act 19, four horsemen, go check that out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Um uh, Triple P put put the link in the um in the chat here for the four horsemen on Facebook uh, so that you can go find it. Uh, shout out to Paula Gilmore. She just checked in with us this evening. Uh, also, uh, I, I want to bring up the fact that you have a clothing line. I know you sent me some information about, you know, mm -hmm. the clothes that you do. Let's talk yeah. about that for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. May I have a, uh, Clothing line is called Dublin Yard, uh, D U B L I N Y A R D. It's the Fox. Um, clothing for the culture, man. We all like to look nice. You know what I'm saying? We all like to look nice. We like to wear the polo, the Louis Vuitton, the Chanel, the Dolce and Gabbana, Balenciaga. We all like that, but we can't afford that. Not each and every one of us. Other than that, we go get a knockoff that's not really going to suffice for what you really want. I'm bringing that to my people. And when I say my people, I mean all my people. You know what I'm saying? And it's affordable. Same quality, same fashion, but it's a fox. It's not a horse. It's not a LV. It's a fox. You look for the fox, man. And, and it's some real good clothes. It's some fun clothing. Look good about yourself. Feel good about yourself when you step out the house, like we was talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. So, so you have uh, casual wear and uh, and or um, you know, sports wear. Yeah, casual and wear, sports wear, uh, jackets, the denim, the bubble jackets, the hats, the beanies, uh, the t-shirts. Got the V-necks as well as the crew uh, socks. Draws, you wrap the Dublin yard around your behind. You know what I mean? Feel good about yourself. Rock the mm -hmm. fox. Yeah. And and if they wanted to, do you have a catalog at a website somewhere or as, as, as of now, um, the website website is under construction, but they can reach me at uh, on Instagram, and that's Dublin Yard D U B L I N underscore Yard, and uh, check it out. Please order. And we're gonna close you up. We're gonna fix you up, man. Yeah, and and his email is right there on the screen. Uh, T H E officials five zero four at gmail dot com. T M E T M E right. T M E officials right. That's right. Uh, five zero four. So I have it listed on the screen there. You can email him directly. And inquire about you know his clothing line. Now, do you offer any other uh, swag or paraphernalia like mugs, uh, baseball caps, things like that? Baseball caps, no, uh, nothing as a sort as like novelties, as mugs or trinkets or anything of sort like that. Uh, basically, the clothing right now we into, uh, but um, in the near future, of course. Uh, but right now is basically um, the clothing apparel. Okay. Any shoe? Any shoes in there? Coming soon. 
Coming soon. Okay. Coming soon. All right. Coming soon. <laughs> you know, I love the idea that uh, all of the brothers that I've talked to um, that are in this music game, you know, all of you all have side hustles or side entities, you know, that you do. So it's not just the music. The music is maybe a passion and something that you yes, love, yeah. you know. But but you also do other things, you know, like when we first tried to schedule you, I'm finna put your business out there. Uh, <laughs> when I first tried to schedule you, you was out there cleaning trailers with power washing. Man, oh, yeah. what's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> hey man, you got you got to do what you got to do, man. A man needs several avenues. You know what I mean? Several avenues to get where you want to get, man. So you know, if 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 it make money, it makes sense to me. You know what I mean? And that's uh -huh. just how. That's what Daddy said. You know, and you know, it's a blueprint. It's the blueprint. Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I I was impressed. I gotta admit. You know, because I was calling you up like two, three days in a row, and you was like, man, I'm working right now. I'm power. I got a contract, man, for the next 10 days, man. We can't do it. <laughs> and I was impressed, man. I was like, go ahead on, brother. Make your money. <laughs> and, and, and if anybody is in the New Orleans, Texas, Mississippi area, hit up Ocean Blue Power Wash, and we come get your job done. ASAP. You say Ocean Blue. I know that's right. Some blue yeah. power. You can find us on Facebook. I know that's right. Hey man, that's what's up. Now, what are some of the other hustles you got? You know, I know. Can you can you speak about them? I don't know, man. I ain't trying to get you in trouble now. Oh man, you know it's an open, legitimate book over here. You know? Okay. So right, right now, basically, you know, I'm, that's all I'm really focusing on. Uh, I have Trouble Minds Entertainment. That's where the TME comes from. That's the label. Uh, and uh, we film, we produce. Uh, my son, y'all be looking out for Big Nick. That's my son. He's going to be coming out on TME. Also, I have twins going to be coming out on TME. Kai and Ty, Lil Soup Dreams. Y'all be looking out for them also. Um, but basically, behind the label, the clothes, pressure washing business, you know, in my household, that's enough for me right now. You know what I mean? I heard that. You said, and the household. I know that's yeah. right, brother. Yeah, hey, man, it's, it's rough out here, man. So now let's talk about the streets of New Orleans right now. Uh, since you're on the streets working and, and, and uh, entertaining and performing, uh, you know, the media would have us believe that New Orleans streets are like Dodge City right now, man. They got all kind of foolishness going on. Uh, and, you know, tourists are being afraid to go down there and hang out. So, so what are you seeing? I mean, me, myself, man, I, I see New Orleans on... Um... I mean, just how it always been, you know what I mean? It's not really, I mean, maybe it's not really nothing changed here. I mean, you know, it's like any other city. When you go somewhere to have some fun somewhere, be where you need to be to have fun. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's, it's the venture. You have, not saying that nothing can't happen to you when you're where you need to be, but you lessen your chance on getting any kind of altercations when you need to be where you're at, you know? I mean, Mississippi, you go to Dallas, you go to Florida. Same thing can happen to you there. You can get robbed. You can get hurt. You can get put in jail. You need to just be where you're being, act accordingly, and adapt to where you're at. You know what I mean? You're going to be fine. Other than that, man, uh, I'm not going to really downplay my city. It's pretty grimy, you know, just like any other spot. Is, but it's also one of the best places in the world to be, you know, if you got the means to be here. Yeah, you're right. And yeah, that's what you know, and, and that's and that's the same thing I would say about Chicago. You know, the mainstream media paint a picture of Chicago. Yeah, yeah I watch yeah. the new Chicago and I'm like, man, I ain't going yeah. up there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, uh, it, it can be rough. Like you just said, if you go in the wrong place looking for the wrong thing, you can wind up finding yourself in a in a world of pain and a world of hurt. You know, right. but as long as you come here, uh, there's a lot of good things that go on in Chicago as well. You know, there's a lot of good people here in Chicago. And, and you know, we do what we do. You know, we have fun, you know. Yeah, of course. Right. You know, I got a lot of good people. You know, I haven't been there yet, uh, planning on it real soon, but I know some good people up there. And uh, it's just like here, there's a lot of good people here too. You know, everybody got these sour apples. 
You know what I mean? New yeah. Orleans might get a few more. We're a little bigger. So, yeah, we got a few more knuckleheads than you, you know. But uh, same scenario everywhere you go. Street code is the same. Mind your business. Yeah. Be where you should be. Yeah. Yeah. So now um, you say you have a record label, TME. So the record label, are you specifically dealing with hip hop or are you dealing with all genres? The gumbo. It's a gumbo. <laughs> it's a gumbo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We, we, we have fun over here, man. You know, whatever you want to bring to the table, bring it. Just just come do you. You know, and it got to sound good, of course. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, it's, it's a gumbo. We don't discriminate on anything. You know what I'm saying? I, I will put out the next best opera singer if I found him or her. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Now, would you say being an independent record label that that you, you would uh, pattern yourself after any of the majors like RCA, Sony, or something like that? What would you do different in this industry? I know that's a, a whole, hard question, man. <laughs> I'm going to sum it up as a whole lot more honesty. Okay. You know what I'm saying? A whole lot more honesty, man, in in, in Back to the truth, man. Be real with people. You know, even though we understand business is business, everybody's not going to sit at the table and have the same size plate as the man who's footing the bill. It's never going to work like that. But you can make it work like that for you. But, you know, it, you got to treat people right. We human beings. We have feelings. We have families. We have loved ones. And you got to treat people right if you want to get your blessings in return. And that's the key. You treat people right, everything's going to be good for you. No backlash is good. Okay. So are you uh, um, opening up your label to new artists and, and presenting, have an opportunity for them to present, or they got to know somebody that knows somebody in order to better get to you and what you do? Hey, man, they, they know you, man. Dr. Ron. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> now, man, you know, I'm, I'm I'm not hard to find, bro. You, you know, I'm not hard to find. The internet is a, is a, is a, is a good thing for everybody. Mm -hmm these days if you use it for what it's for. You know what I'm saying? I'm not hard to find you got something that's good, hit me up. We're gonna listen, mm -hmm. we can talk. And I'm gonna give you the honest opinion. That's how we keep it. There you go. Yeah, I like that. So now, uh, you being in New Orleans, you know, born and raised, right? We lost him there. Hello? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I said, you, yeah, you New Orleans born and raised, right? Oh, man, born and raised from the ground. All right, so what would you say your cooking style is like? I got to go there, man, because New Orleans is all about food. Hey, man, I, I put it like this. You know, we got a lot of chefs come from here, and they all, that's all, you know, um, restaurant style cooking. That's not where the real chefs come. The real chefs come from under the bridge and that hole in the wall where you wouldn't even think about going to eat at. That's where your good food I know food. that's right. <laughs> hey, man, look. Every time I talk to somebody, I always ask this question. Um, they used to have a little spot called Sam's. It was a pool hall and it was under the Mississippi Bridge, you know, and it got, I think it got flooded out decades ago under with one of those, um, Hurricanes that got flooded in, in there. In Algiers, in Algiers. No, 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 not across the river. It was on up, uptown side. Okay, okay. Yeah, it was a pool hall, man, not too far from Rampart Street, uh, right underneath the Mississippi Bridge, man. I think it's been gone for decades, but that spot was, like you said, under the bridge. You know, you had to know where it was, and you went there on purpose. Man. Right. That was that was, you. You can go down there and get uh, a poor boy sandwich. Yeah, uh, twenty four seven. Twenty four seven, baby. Ain't nothing yeah. changed. Still like that. Twenty four seven. Yep. Yeah, ain't nothing changed. Still like that, man. Yeah, you know, and I know sometimes um, when you get there, because one of my favorite spots was we never closed. I think they closed now. I don't think they even open no more. I, yeah. nah, don't, we never close. It's gone over with. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then then we used to have other places that we would go, like gas stations. You right. know, up on Tulane, we can go to the gas station, go in the back of the gas station, and guy will put you a sandwich together, man, that would uh, make you 
um, be like, man, I got to get another one of these before I leave town. You got know? high sausage and cheese on French, baby. You got to get you two of them. Yeah, man. But see, you know, sometimes people wind up uh, in the French Quarter. You know, now, you know, you can go down to the French Quarter and spend all that money. Right. But, you know, but really all you need to go to the French for the Quarter for is uh, Cafe Du Monde. After that, you can leave. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, if, you're not, if, you're not, if you don't want to see no art and, uh, you know, what's going on in the quarter, you can go. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It, you know, and I'm going to keep it real. That, you know, it's a tourist trap. It is what it right. is. Right. Exactly. Trap, and you, but you're not going to get the authentic taste of the Big Easy. Yeah. And, you know, uh, and, and I think Jackson Square, they still have the artists over there drawing and doing all that stuff. Yeah, reading your poems, tarot readings, and everything. You say reading your poems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you go over there and find out what your future might be. You know, you what say I mean? might be. <laughs> oh my God, you're gonna make me tell a story. But used to have a guy, uh, the only guy that had a kiosk in the uh, in the in the mall over there in Jackson Square. Right. Uh, they used to call him the Chicken Man. You remember the Chicken Man? No. no. Oh, man, that's a little bit for your time. But yeah. the chicken man used to have that, you know, where you can go get a Gris Gris bag or a Mojo or something like that. He had all that stuff in his kiosk. And he was the only guy that they would allow, Jack's Brewery. Uh, Jack. that Yeah, that they used to allow to be able to be over there uh, because he was supposed to be legit. Okay. But, you know, for, for all those that don't know what a Gree Gree bag and a mojo is, you're going to have to go Google it because I ain't finna tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, look, man, um, I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule, man, because, you know, you. you've been rolling, man. You know, since last week when I talked to you, you was on your way then and you're on your way now. So yeah. I definitely appreciate it. Uh, we got a couple of more minutes um, left on this episode. We got about six minutes or so left. Um, what I'd like to do is, uh, is there anything that you would like to leave with the people before you get out of here today? What would you like to leave with the people? Man, you know, the one thing I want to leave with the people, honor and respect yourself first. And after you do that, Look up that full horse when they go check that out and pass that to a friend. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> do that. You say do that. Make sure. Yeah. Make sure. Yeah. So you got any special projects coming up anytime soon? We still got a few more minutes. You know, tell them about where they can yeah, man, we come gotta, hook up uh, with you. Matter of fact, the the the, the full horsemen are um in the studio right now preparing the album for the people. All right, um, so that's gonna be out shortly. Uh, gonna have post of visuals coming out for you guys. Um, I got the Block Burner Slim LP coming out shortly after that. That's a um, that's gonna be my album. Uh, be looking out for that. Uh, and as I said before, um, be looking out for Big Nick, Kai Ty, Little Soup Dreams. Also, you know what I'm saying. We are uh, trying to hit them hard with the music. Trouble Minds Entertainment 22. Four horsemen we riding. Shout out to Lord Nexus one more again. Exit only. Box a million. It's my brothers. Big tone, where you at, baby? Select Holla, Fred Style. What's good, son? Triple P. That's what it is. White boy James. Y'all know what it is. DJ Dispel. You dig? Holla at your boy. Black Troy Mace. Man, the list go on and on. You know what I'm saying? King Bryce. What's good, baby? See, that's what you need to make things happen. See what I'm saying? Mm. That's what you need to make things happen. You need that proper, you need a family, you need the proper family. You can get any family you want. You need that proper family. And it don't happen overnight, as we can see in a lot of people, uh, relationships and uh, labels don't happen overnight. Best friends and buddies don't always rock to the bitter end. You know what I mean? Got to have focus. 
You got to have loyalty and everybody got to do their job. You got to pull your weight. You got to handle mm-hmm. your and that's what we got over here. And that's part of the success of the Four Horsemen. We're surrounded by some good people that have us in their bad interest. And we got them work both ways. You know what I mean? Yep. 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 Well, I would be remiss if I don't give a shout out to the queen who's driving you around right now. You know, because <laughs> uh, when this episode started, you know, he said, I said, well, you must not be driving. And he and he pointed out the fact that the queen was uh, over in the driver's seat, getting them to safely where they had to go. So uh, shout out to the queen. Shout you know. out, queen. Yep, definitely making I sure you gotta, you, your team got to be strong, bro. Everybody got to play their role, do their thing to make them wheels move. You there know you I'm? go. There you go. That's what's up. So uh, look, we're gonna uh, thank you once again. You know, I, I'm sure. Thank you know, you. Um, you know, we would we would like to have another opportunity to bring you back when you sit and steal, because it's yeah. a struggle, man. You know, we got to get you sitting still, bro. You know, I mean, we had you scheduled, we pulled it off, you know, but we need to have you sitting happen. still. That's the main thing that you always make it happen. You make it do what it do by any means necessary. We did yes, that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We pulled it off. Service yes. be under some better circumstances. There you go. So you going to come back and see me again? I will come back and see you, man. I'm going to get you info, man. Send me info. I'm going to get you some of that doubling, y'all. You need to rock that fox up there in Chi-Town. Okay. All right. Now, look, don't promise me something. I'll send you some info. Hey, man. <laughs> hey. Do your research. Yeah, when yeah. that's gold, bro, that's gold. That's gold. All right. That oh. sounds good to me. Yeah, definitely. You know, so once again, shout out to um, uh, Triple P Management for, uh, you know, making sure we got together in the first place, you know, and uh, she's been with us this entire show. We thank her. Uh, shout out to Enoch. I see her on the line. Apostle Early and Miles, uh, she dropped in. She's down in Georgia. So we've been getting people from all over the country that have dropped in on us today. And we want to thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedule That's to, right. uh, to, right. to drop in and check us out. You know, what it do, baby? Yes, definitely. You know, so uh, once again, you know, any final words you want to leave? Anything else? Anything you didn't forget you forgot to mention? Yeah, one more thing, man. Full horsemen out right now. Y'all go check that out. <laughs> and everybody to go get that. Pass it to a friend. <laughs> to everybody. We're in effect. Full horsemen. Slick there dog. you go. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah, keep consistent with your message. I like that. Well, look, you stay right there. Don't go anywhere. Uh, we're going to... Um, uh, switch up just a little bit. We're going to throw some more information up on the screen. Uh, I want to encourage everybody uh, to go over to my website, ask-dr-rn.com. Uh, we have multiple ways for you all to be able to support what we do here with your support and your contributions that uh, makes it possible for us to keep doing what we're doing. Uh, please Check out the YouTube channel. Uh, click on the tabs for all my social media on my website. Uh, subscribe, like, and share. Tell somebody about this show. Uh, we appreciate all that have dropped in and those that have came by to support what we're doing. Uh, we're going to keep on doing what we're doing. We appreciate you all. You know, we look forward to seeing you guys all on next week as we continue talking about um, all of the things that are going on in black history on Sundays. Don't forget to stop in on us on Thursday. Street News Now. We got a show with the six guys and you. Please come check us out. Uh, you can catch us at the YouTube channel. Uh, and, you, and you won't miss a word. You can see us all live over there. So peace and love. See y'all on next week. <laughs>